Hey, we get to do a crowd now. Doing a crowd is one of my favorite uh, things to do when I am just mindlessly drawing. Uh, it's, it's fun because for one, watercolor lends itself to having multiple things going on at the same time. So if you're good about that, you will enjoy watercolor. And, and so I like that, you know, I can do plop some faces, plop some whatever. It's like I'm making a lot of tiny personal pizzas and I change it up every time that I hop from one to the other. So it keeps it fun and exciting. We're going to do a very simple form of a crowd so that you will do it. And then you can do it however you want. And by simple, I mean, we'll use watercolor for the skin tones, maybe some of the hair, maybe a little blush on the cheeks like I like to do. But then use just um, a pen, like a, a gel pen, a black fine tip Sharpie will also work to put in the eyes and the noses, finish it off, maybe a white gel pen if we feel like it needs to swing that way and have those little elements in it. And then we'll be done. So I've done this in my sketchbook several times and it's a, it's a great way to play with the colors you have left on your palette and also to experiment with skin tones. So let's get started. All right, I've got some skin tones again. I should say face tones out again. I'm using the same ones just to kind of keep my pieces nice and congruent. So I have Lip Smack in Pink, Flesh Tint, and Bismarck Brown here. And you'll see that actually it's pretty easy to get a little mixed up with these in a good way as far as you can mix them. Uh, they, uh, you know, your brush will be dirty. You know, you don't need a mixing palette as long as you're okay with messing up your paints a little bit in certain spots. As we paint, we take the paint off. So I'm really all right with that, uh, with mixing it right there. I'm gonna use this marker. I got it at Target because uh, I went on a trip and didn't have art supplies, was so lost. So I got a sketchbook and some of these, this is 0.45 millimeter, but really any, any little ink pen, you know, pen with a, a nice tip on it will do. I think you get the idea. All right, with my wet brush, I'm just gonna start painting some face shapes. That is one bright, dark, I should say, dark face. And I, instead of going all the way up, I am kind of stopping at the hairline. I'm gonna pick up some of that paint and use it over here. And in order to create rhythm, you want to spread out your faces. This isn't going to, uh, be something that we need to worry too much about as far as, you know, like where things go and, and is this person overlapping this person? Right now, we're just doing a lot of little blots. If you get too literal, you run the risk of this looking like a Where's Waldo, and that's not really what we want. We want it to feel fresh and laid back, and so as you paint, approach it that way. I'm gonna go ahead and start adding ears uh, on some of them, maybe not all of them, maybe the hair is gonna cover that one. This one looks like they're looking down a little bit. These face shapes are pretty much all oval. This feels a little rectangular, so it's nice, but I'm gonna have to switch it up a little bit as I reach for the flesh tint, which I want to keep very watery. If I don't do it watery, it comes out orange as it did. So I'm going to make this one, well, let's make it square. In your handout, you see that there is there are five different face shapes, oval, round, square, rectangular, and triangular. And that was a PDF in a prior lesson. Again, to keep it very, just working all over the page. Obviously, the more of these I do, the more, 
the more work I'm, I'm signing up for. A note about just creating the outside shape here. You might want to add a chin here and there. Not everyone has a pronounced chin, but just to show, you know, a little more of a hint of what kind of a person this is or what, what they look like. This guy has a little bit more of a chin. This feels like a more masculine um, shape. And I'm running out of paint, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little mixing, like I said I would. Not a huge difference, these colors are pretty similar. I'm trying to do kind of more of a triangle shape. I think uh, Scarlett Johansson, someone whose cheekbones are ridiculously pronounced. And now with a little brown. This is also a triangular shape because it's pointy at the bottom. And as long as I make those cheekbones pronounced, well, I just messed it up. That's an oval, <laughs> which is fine. I just want to show you a variety here. I'm going to put a nice little square one up here and call it good. Now, when you look at a crowd, obviously this is not a very realistic take. They almost walk in rows, right? When you're, think of going on a school trip, you've got the people that want to straggle in the back and you've got people in the front leading the way. These are fairly organic and we're not going to draw every last detail. Uh, they will just kind of be busts that overlap a teensy bit over each other. Bringing in some browns. Perfect. Getting my brush wet again. I'm gonna start with a color I already have going. And this is the time to do hair. This is the fun part to me because I feel like hair really helps add a lot of personality to the faces that we create faces that we see. So I create, I, I treat the hair kind of as a mass at first. So it's all one blob, it's all one outline, right? So right now I just want to define that hairline a little bit and create the, the bottom shape of the hair. When I mess up, then I, you know, by making the shape be not what I wanted it to be, that I go with it, right? So let's say I want this guy to have uh, a pronounced um, forehead or like he's losing a little bit of hair. I dip in a little more. If that went a little too crazy, I give him bangs. He's suddenly a girl. So that's the great thing about working from this like kind of... Uh, the structure. The hair also, I'm not going to be super literal. So you know what? I want to do outlines. This is, this is like my chance to sketch a little bit and experiment with different treatments. That's why I, I wanted this to be the, the second exercise or early on in exploring faces because you get to explore a little variety and you're not locked into this one blonde person, um, this one Native American person, or whatever it is that you wanna draw. You have a chance to kind of play a little bit with different colors, and we're not even being very uh, accurate with our skin tones and colors. We wanna be a little crazy. This is our chance to be a little wild. So let's say this person, typically I like to add in actually a little blue or violet when I'm doing hair. I think I got that from Archie Comics. Uh, Veronica's hair always had like a blue highlight around the crown uh, and I kind of picked up on that. But just for the sake of keeping this harmonious and making it really easy to jump into, I think I need a blonde. I'm gonna go with yellow ochre. 
I'm using these uh, kind of normal-ish uh, colors, just slightly heightened. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing here. How about she has pigtails. There we go. She'll have pigtails. I'll draw the the little ribbon later. I like bangs because they come into the hairline and then I don't need to define it quite as much. I think they're fun to use. Where else could I do a blonde? Over here. Mm. Make you a flat top. A flat top blonde. You don't see very many of those up anymore. I'm okay with doing something a little different. We're already winding down on the hair. Ooh, this person doesn't have ears, so we're gonna cover her face a little bit. I was gonna give her a top bun, but I don't think that would work without any ears showing. Now, often a problem that I encounter with doing these crowds, these faces all mashed up together, is that uh, it's much easier to give them short hair than long hair and start running into the person below. But for the sake of teaching and letting you guys see me screw up so you don't feel like you have to, I'm gonna go ahead and make this layered look a little longer than I planned. Now where my hair is covering the face does need to get darker. So if you want to keep that in mind when you're doing your faces to give those with the darker hair color, the kind that covers over the face someplace at some point. Going with flat black. Now instead of making a blob like this guy, I'm going to uh, kind of use my brush as a hairbrush. Again, this is something I talk about in the Expressive Little Faces book where we can treat the hair as a block. We can treat the hair in layers, stylizing it where we start with this brown and then bring in some darks to make it more realistic. Or we use our, our very brush as a hairbrush, kind of combing him or combing them as we go. I'm tempted to do the next step, but I'm going to hold back until we have all the hair in. I'm trying to think of what other hairstyles I haven't really Done. Trying to think, uh, ponytail, I guess. I haven't done ponytail. So a ponytail kind of looks like a man's haircut. Short, close to the head. And then of course you have the hair that's coming off. She's got quite a good bit of lift, which is nice, huh? We don't all get that when we put our hair up. I do, but I'm not here to brag. All right, moving on to the last hair. Last, um, I want to make him a guy, but we got a lot of guys here, so we'll make you a girl. And we'll make you... A girl with uh, no bangs, but still swooping down. When the face is angled like that to one side, I like to be able to kind of capitalize on that feeling of movement. Thinking of like a shampoo commercial. All right, so my next step is eyebrows because we're using a lot of the 
same colors. Eyebrows and uh, a little bit of uh, cheeks if we so choose to. A little cheek color. You don't have to. And even uh, maybe starting to give a little expression. This guy's eyebrow is up. Her eyebrows aren't going to be very defined as their kids' eyebrows. Maybe a little surprised. Maybe nice and sculpted. Men's are tend to be more rectangular. I'm getting really sloppy with my eyebrows because I'm over it. All right. Cheeks. A quick last. Um, oh, I forgot I had pink right here. I like to add rosy cheeks. That's totally optional. Even on the guys. Any touches that I need on the hair, I just go one step up from the color that it had. For instance, here where I need to really guide the eye away from the face shape that's underlying this color, then I add more strokes around it, on top of it, away from it to distract the viewer from noticing that, yeah, I did just work on top of another line and I don't want to confuse you as to what's what. So follow my brush, follow my lead. I'm gonna give girl with a ponytail a little more direction in her hair so you know it's gathered and we're done with that. All right. Adding a few necks. The width of necks, you know, if you actually look at them in real life, they are very uh, thick or wide, but because our eyes kind of foreshorten as they round around um, and there's such a shadow around them, I, I make them a little thinner than they need to be just to um, kind of go with what we expect. But really, if you see the neck connects from down from the ear, and since I'm going to draw in uh, some a little bit of fashion, a little hint of clothing. I can decide here when I'm painting the neck uh, how I want the neckline to look on whatever shirt they're going to be wearing, if any shirt at all. The good thing about working with a limited color scheme is it's not hard to remember which color was used because I only have a few options, three options here. And I can also, you know, her, her face is getting a little chubby on that side. I can make the neck slightly darker and adjust every step of the way as you're painting, you can use it to adjust. Now the neck typically is darker looking than the face because of the, the shadow cast by the head. In these pieces though, you just really want it to look just a little different so it doesn't look like we're um, looking at a flat shape. But these are different shapes piled on top of each other. This guy, I'm only gonna give him a teensy hint of a neck. 
Because I don't know why, but I like me a little turtleneck on somebody. All right, that's all we're doing with watercolor. You can continue to work in watercolor, but we're wanting to make this fast and fun. So we're gonna go to our marker. It is fast and fun, but not everything is dry. So being careful to select parts that um, are dry. I always like to start with the eyes and the easiest way to handle them is to make them uh, opaque, just a, a silhouette of a shadow. I won't do them all this way. Um, I'm gonna be good and only do eyes first. But the good thing about doing these kind of silhouetted eyes is that you start to notice uh, how to make slight variations with the same shape. Right, so these are essentially the same shape. They're kind of like half circles, but here they're, they're slanted inward and here they're flat. Here they've got a little, at the corner, a little, a little bit of eyelash. Let's make hers a little wider, bigger. Let's make his looking up and not a semicircle, but rounded at the bottom too, so he's not he's not smiling. And we can we can use these shapes to experiment with how we would position eyes. This guy I made him looking that way. How did I do that by making him his eyes wide on the left? This girl I'm gonna make her looking this way by doing just two teardrops that are angled to the right. She is so sweet and happy, we can't even see her eyes. She just got almost closed eyes. This guy has a raised eyebrow, so one eye is going to be looking up and wider than this one, because he doesn't have an eyebrow pulling up that eyelid. And her eyes are going to be just kind of small and round because we haven't done that yet. And closer together. All right, now nostrils. Uh, you can choose, nostrils are, I mean, noses are just a collection of shadows. So where are the harshest shadows? Are they below the nose? They don't always fall in the same places. If you've got big nostrils, that's gonna be your darkest part. If your eye, your head is angled, you're gonna show one nostril and not so much of the other. They might be angled down, um, particularly with a pointy nose. Might be wider. Some people, you don't even see their nostrils hardly because the slope of their nose is covering them. So all you see is that middle slope going down. But it is the darkest part of the nose. It's the only thing that's like really there. <laughs> Everything else is an implied shadow. All right, let's do the faces. Taking a cue from the eyes that are happy. Give her a smile. Give him a shy smile. I always start from the top. The bottom lip may or may not be outlined. This guy seems like he is very smiley to me. Guys are definitely the hardest when it comes to the mouths because you can't do too much you gotta lay off and sometimes simplicity is definitely the hardest thing. So I just gave him, you know, the middle crack, the opening of the mouth and a shadow underneath. So 
similar to her, she doesn't have a very full or developed lips yet as a girl. Oh. We'll give her something slightly different just to change it up a little bit. I'm going to outline some of the facial features that we painted with watercolor. Now I want to be careful that, you know, it's not necessary to outline these fully, but particularly with this little girl, she's going to need a little help. And then that'll easily lead me to their clothes. It's always nice to have kind of a, a little bit of a defined neck collar but most of us don't wear clothes like that anymore doesn't this kid look like a jock all right and he was gonna have a turtleneck for me so to differentiate face, chin from turtleneck, he's going to have maybe some more lines than everyone else here. She has a scalloped top of some sort. This little girl, she kind of has a thick neck and we said we were going to Help her hair a little bit here. It's getting a little congested here. The same lines that we were creating with black, I can also create with white. Basically, you're either drawing the, um, the highlights or the shadows, right? And sometimes, especially in hair, they both describe what's going on in the hair. A lot of highlights, a lot of shadows. And there's our crowd. I'm excited to see how you guys do it. You can add more um, details. These are very simplified. Uh, we could put more shadows under the neck. We could make the ears better defined. We could um, work on all their clothes so we see exactly where everybody is. Uh, she's the only one that bothers me because it's like her head's coming out of another girl's head. It's not cool. Uh, we need to we need to break you guys apart a little bit. So I hope you enjoy this little exercise. You'll find yourself uh, sketching people, uh, I think, all the time. It is kind of addicting. <laughs>